one of my favorite seasons in the garden is definitely flowering season and it is mango flowering season here at our tiny garden and of course in Kenya. One of the greatest menace that we've had as mango farmers is definitely the mango fruit fly, otherwise known as the oriental fruit fly and the scientific name for this is Bactrocera dorsalis. Synthetic chemicals have been used to control the mango fruit flies, but this has definitely come with its negative effects. Number one, it is the effect they have on our bees and definitely the effect that it has on our environment. Over time, farmers have been seeking effective biological methods to control the mango fruit fly. In this video, we take a look at effective biological control methods against the mango fruit fly, and we will start with entomopathogenic fungi, and to be very specific here is Metahesium anisopili is Cipe strain 69 that has been shown to be very effective against the mango fruit fly. And then we are going to look at various techniques like auto dissemination of the pathogen and how to control or get rid of the larvae and the pupa of the mango fruit fly that is in the soil by way of solarization. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. My name is Paula and this is our tiny garden. Bactrocera dusalis is commonly known as the oriental fruit fly and is a significant pest of mangoes, particularly in its native Southeast Asia and Africa and also other regions where it has now spread. The adult fly measures approximately 8 millimeters long with distinctive yellow and black coloration with clear wings and it lays its eggs in ripening mangoes. The emerging larvae burrow into the fruit's flesh feeding on it and causing extensive damage that leads to decay and spoilage. This infestation results in substantial economic losses for mango producers due to both direct fruit damage and the increased costs of pest management. The broad host range and high reproductive capacity of Bactrocera dorsalis make it a formidable challenge, necessitating rigorous quarantine measures and integrated pest control strategies that protect mango crops and ensure their marketability. The life cycle of Bactrocera dorsalis consists of four stages, that is the egg, larvae, pupa and the adult. Females lay eggs in ripening fruits which hatch into larvae within a few days. The larvae feed on the fruit's flesh causing significant damage as they develop. After completing the larval stage, they exit the fruit to pupate in the soil. The pupal stage lasts for several days to weeks depending on environmental conditions before emerging as adults. Adults then mate and begin the cycle anew. Controlling each stage of the life cycle is crucial to prevent population buildup and subsequent crop damage. Egg and larval control minimizes direct fruit damage Pupil control reduces future adult populations and adult control prevents reproduction and further infestation. Bactrocera dorsalis causes distinct damage symptoms on mangoes. Infested mango fruits typically show signs such as puncture marks or oviposition scars on the surface where females lay their eggs. As the eggs hatch, the larvae tunnel into the fruit's flesh, creating winding tunnels as they feed. This feeding activity leads to softening of the fruit, premature ripening, and often results in fruit drop. Infested mangoes can also exhibit secondary symptoms like oozing sap, rotting flesh, and an unpleasant odor due to microbial infections entering through the puncture wounds. Severe infestations can render the fruits unmarketable, causing significant economic losses to mango producers. Entomopathogenic fungi have been used to control the mango fruit fly biologically and one example here is Metahesium anisopili and to be specific this is Isipe strain 69 that is highly effective against Bactrocella dorsalis. It involves harnessing the power of the entomopathogenic fungus ability to infect and kill the pest. The strain of Metahesium anisopili which is now Isipe strain 69 is specifically formulated to target fruit flies like Bactrocella dorsalis. When applied, the fungus adheres to the fly's cuticle, germinates and penetrates its body, ultimately leading to fungal colonization and death. 
the mango fruit fly can be controlled biologically by using a technique that we call auto dissemination of pathogens this method leverages on the behavior of the target pest to carry and spread the pathogen within its population this method involves using a device combining a pheromone lure food bait and metahesium anisopilized spores in powder form that will operate synergistically to control Bactrocella dorsalis. The pheromone lure will attract the male flies and the food bait will entice both males and females, drawing them into proximity with the device. Upon contact, the metahesium spores will adhere to the flies germinating and infecting the insect's body. The infected flies may then contribute to the secondary infection by spreading fungal spores to healthy individuals as they move between fruits, further reducing the population. These devices are available through agricultural supply companies and pest management providers that specialize in biological control products. They are often packaged in convenient, ready-to-use formats that are designed for easy deployment in orchards and agricultural fields. The metahesium spores are usually integrated into the device or they are provided separately in powder form for application. Packaging ensures the spores remain viable and effective until deployment, maintaining their potency in controlling the mango fruit fly population. Metahesium anisopili ICP strain 69 should also be applied directly to the soil by way of spraying to control larvae and pupa of the mango fruit fly. Another excellent technique for controlling the pupa and the larvae of mango fruit fly is what we call solarization. Now, in this technique, you're going to use the fallen mangoes that are infested with the mango fruit fly and place them in a black plastic bag, which is then sealed and left under direct sunlight. The black bag traps solar heat, creating a greenhouse effect that significantly raises the temperatures inside. This elevated heat level usually reaches up to 60 degrees centigrade or even higher is very lethal to the larvae and the pupa of Bactrocera dorsalis present in the fallen mangoes. The high temperature effectively disrupts the life cycle of the pest by killing the immature stages before they can develop into adults. The black bag with fallen mango fruits should be placed in direct sun for at least 7 to 10 days. After solarization, the treated mangoes can safely be used as compost as the heat would have killed the pest and started the decomposition process, enriching the compost with valuable nutrients. And there you have it. Now you have all the information that you need on the mango fruit fly, how to physically identify it, and the telltale signs that your mangoes have been infested with the mango fruit flies. And of course, the most important part is how to control the mango fruit fly biologically. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, please do share it with someone who might be interested in this kind of content. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Until the next video, happy gardening.